Today I'm going to do a couple of videos about a few current events. And the first one that I want to talk about is another case of police brutality, another example of what we have been complaining about, what we have been talking about. Another black man has been killed by the police. This brother, Terrence Crutcher, was killed by Tulsa, Oklahoma police. This brother was stopped by the police. And according to the video footage, this man had his hands in the air when the police arrived. He had his hands in the air and he was backing up from the police. The police tased this brother and after they tased him, they shot him to death. Originally, they said that he refused to follow orders. They said that he continued not to listen to the police. And he continued just to disobey the police. But in the video footage from the helicopter and from the police car, you can see that he has his hands in the air. You can't hear the conversation. I wish that we could hear the conversation. Um, between the police that were on the scene, that were right there in front of him. You hear other police who are observing the scene make comments, but we don't actually hear the police who had their guns aimed at this brother. And we don't hear what this brother was saying at the time when he was shot. I wonder if there were body cameras. And if I'm not mistaken, according to the police report, they said that they don't have poly body cameras, if I'm not mistaken. So there's much that is missing, you know, much information that we don't have. We don't have the conversation between the officer and these people. Um, but just by looking at the video footage, it looks like the brother was compliant to a great degree since he had his hands in the air. It's apparent that he didn't pose any kind of threat to the police because he had his hands in the air. Now, the officer who shot and killed this brother claims that she thought that he had a gun. She claims that um, he was acting erratically. They claim that he was reaching inside of the car for something, and they feared that he had a gun, and they decided to take his life. They claim that he was not complying with orders again. But in the video, we see that he has his hands up. In the video, they tell us that he is tased first. You know, they talk about that, and you can actually see him being tased. And then after he is tased, he is shot by the police. Now, my question is, what threat did this brother pose? He had his hands in the air. He was unarmed. There was no gun recovered on his person or in the car. What threat did this brother pose? What threat did he pose after he was tased, after he was laying on the ground helpless? What kind of threat did that brother pose? He didn't pose any threat at all, but those police took his life anyway. And that's often the case. The police apparently are caught in another lie here. They said that this brother was non-compliant and that he pose some kind of threat from what I understand. But yet when we look at the video, we see otherwise. And the person who was in the helicopter, from what I recall, said something like, he's a bad guy. You know, he looks like a bad guy and all this and that. Because that's the perception that they have of us. They view black people as inherently dangerous. So they overreact when they encounter black people. They tend to use deadly force more so with black people than they do with other groups of people. And it's documented by plenty of statistics, and I've cited them time and time again. I will include links to the actual articles about this story, and I will also include links to statistics about police shootings so that you can see that there is a disparity in terms of how the police react to black people. And I found it odd that this 
situation actually happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the place where we had Black Wall Street, the place where there was a race riot and all those businesses that black people spent their lives building were destroyed. All of that was wiped out. And it just makes me think about a fundamental question. Where are our generals? Where's the black man and woman's army? Where are the black soldiers? I'm not talking about soldiers that served the United States of America. I'm talking about soldiers that served the black nation in America. Where are those soldiers at? We have to move beyond just complaining about these situations that we hear about. We have to move beyond that. And we have to get out of the habit of believing these police officers account. We have to get out of the habit of believing what the media tells us to believe about these police shootings. Because this video is a, a prime example of what we have been talking about. These police officers are untrustworthy. They lie regularly. And this video, according to uh, at least one article that I've read, contradicts the police officer's initial account of what happened. And I'll include that article in the description box as well for you to read. The police told one story in the case of Walter Scott. And then it turns out when this video evidence was produced, it turns out that the police literally murdered that brother, shot him in the back multiple times, killing him when he posed no threat, when he was running from the police. And the same thing happened in Chicago with Laquan McDonald. The police told one story, but the video evidence told the actual truth about what happened. The police killed that brother. He wasn't posing any kind of threat to the police. He was walking away from the police and the police shot him down anyway. That's why we should never give the police the benefit of the doubt. Never give them the benefit of the doubt. Wait for the evidence. Demand the video be released. That's what we have to do. Again, I, I ask, like, where are our soldiers? Where is our army to defend our communities? The Nation of Islam had a, a protest months ago. And they said, justice or else. Right now we see that it's obvious that justice is nowhere in sight. And my question is, where is the or else? We've had all these killings since that march. Where is the or else? Where is it? When is the or else coming? What is the or else? And recently we've had some stories about acts of terrorism in New York and New Jersey. And I'm probably going to do a follow-up video tonight just focusing on that and talking about that situation, or it may be tomorrow. It depends on, you know, how things work out tonight. But they keep talking about these incidents of terrorism in America and Europe and all this. They talk about the conflicts in the Middle East. They want us to be fearful of these terrorist groups. And we should obviously be aware of our environment. We should be cautious and we should be mindful of the world in which we live. But when I look at the world in which black people live, 
I see that the police pose a greater threat to black people than some foreign terrorist group with limited reach in the United States. Black people, black men in particular, are more likely to be killed by the police who are sworn to protect and serve the people than they are to be killed by ISIS or some other terrorist group. Black people are more likely to be killed by these white supremacist organizations than they are to be killed by terrorist groups like ISIS. Unfortunately, the people who are supposed to be public servants too often, too often, they are nothing but terrorists. These, photo, these photographs and these videos, these police videos, are analogous to the terrorist videos that we saw a while ago, where terrorists are featured killing American citizens. We're terrorized by these videos featuring police shooting black people down in the streets, featuring police choking black people live on camera. See, with the terrorists, we know that when they commit these acts of terrorism in the United States, they will be killed or captured by the authorities. Even if they are foreign terrorists, we know that this government will hunt them down and bomb them with drones. They will hunt them and assassinate them and destroy them. They will bring them to justice. But when these police kill black people, we don't have that guarantee. Because the very system that's supposed to render justice is the same system that insulates and protects these police. That's why they walk away free after killing black people. Too often that is the case. Too often. Too often they're not even charged with anything. So yes, I fear the police more than I fear these foreign terrorist groups. And yes, some of our police are the actual terrorists in our communities. And not only are these police protected by the system, they are rewarded by the system. They are promoted. They receive pay raises, as we saw in the case of the brother Eric Garner, the officer who choked that brother to death, received a pay increase. And the white man who shot down Amadou Diallo received a promotion. This is the world in which we live. 